As investors, we're always looking for that next 10X stock, that next big runner in the portfolio that could make a big impact. Now, you know I've been bullish on semiconductors for a while. Back in August of 2020, I called semiconductors the new oil. And you think about semiconductors, they're needed for everything. All the secular growth trends, all the mega trends that you think of from metaverse, data center, 5G, autonomous vehicles, on and on and on. Semiconductors are in everything from this microphone, computer, TV behind me, your kids' toys, and some more complex than others. Now, I've got an entire series in the channel that covers my top semiconductor stocks and this is a follow-up video it's a, a stock that didn't quite make the top 10 list but one that should be in your radar and that i actually think could be a 10x from here i'm going to break it down today now what this is all about you think of semiconductors we talked last time we broke down semiconductors we talked about fabulous we talked about foundries we broke that down now one thing we didn't talk about is how all those electric components communicate together and really the timing of those. And so when you think about that, historically over the last 70 years, quartz has been used. Now there's a newer technology that's starting to get a lot of traction called MEMS, M-E-M-S. I'm gonna explain what that is and I'm gonna show you a small cap stock that invented MEMS and really is starting to take off. A lot of traction, the growth is absolutely amazing. There's some reasons for that and I'll explain it in the video. You're gonna to wanna to see this one. This could be the next 10X stock, small cap semiconductor stock in your portfolio. Stay tuned. So let's explain what MEMS are. And throughout this video, you're gonna see animations. Those animations are gonna compare MEMS. So the little guy with the M is MEMS and the Q is Quartz. Remember Quartz was the older technology. It's about 70 years old and it's being replaced more and more with MEMS. So when you think of MEMS chips, they're very tiny. I'm gonna explain what they are, give you some details, but just from a high level, they, they do everything from control electronic devices to make sure like a thermostat, the thermostat works, your phone, the orientation of your phone when you flip your phone so that that flips, that's a MEMS chip in there. And really MEMS are about timing. So you think of data centers, you think of 5G, you think of all those electric, electronic components they need timing, and these are essentially chips that deal with timing for everything, for all electronics. They're very important and they're never really talked about. We didn't talk about them at all on the semiconductor series. So what does MEMS stand for? Micro Electromechanical System, it's a mouthful, or MEMS, is a miniature machine with both electrical and mechanical components, so very unique. It can be impossibly small. MEMS can range in size from several millimeters and actually watched an interview with the CEO, he talked about the chips being 0.5 by 0.5 millimeters. That's very, very tiny. They can range from those small millimeters all the way down to 1,000th of a millimeter, not even visible to the human eye, which doesn't seem possible, but it actually is possible. And despite their small size, they're actually filled with complex components, which is really amazing if you think about what the, this technology can do and just how far semiconductors have really come. These MEMS can be filled with microprocessors, they can be filled with micro actuators, sensors, units for data processing, and other parts that interact with exterior pieces. Essentially, make things work like a mini brain that helps with the timing of all those electrical components. So some real life examples of MEMS. I mentioned the smartphone orientation, in fact, Apple is one of the largest customers of this company that I'm gonna talk about today, of this stock. They also can detect environmental changes in molecular manufacturing rooms. They can work in thermostats. They can even adjust the flow in inkjet printers and much more. As they become smaller, they require less power and they become less expensive. And I, there was actually an interview with the CEO, listen to this. So these chips are very small and this was a Fox News uh, interview. And they interviewed the CEO and they said, why are you guys handling the supply chain issues so much better than your competition? And I thought the answer was really interesting. So a couple of points here. He mentioned it's very hard to do precision timing. He mentioned that MEMS are fabulous semiconductors, okay? So MEMS was invented by this company and they use Taiwan Semiconductor and Bosch. So you got Taiwan and of course you've got Germany. Now their competition uses fabs, so the older quartz technology that I mentioned earlier. That quartz technology is harder to produce, it's a little bit slower and the chips are a little bit larger. So even though the supply chain is impacting this company some, it's not as impactful as other companies they compete with. So this company invented MEMS-based timing and the CEO in quotes here called it moving parts in silicon. Now these chips are very, very small. I mentioned 0.5 by 0.5 millimeters for each chip. So they can get 100,000 of these chips, 100,000 chips in one wafer. 
in one single wafer. So Bosch in Germany can make 100,000 chips on one single wafer, and that has given them a competitive advantage during this semiconductor shortage. So the company is Side Time, and it is pronounced Side Time, not C Time, not Yes Time in Espanol. Side Time, Sci for Silicon, like Silicon Valley, okay? So Side Time's the company, and I'm gonna go through this website just really fast to show you high level kind of what they, what they work with. And then I'm gonna talk about the stock, the valuation, and so on. So you'll definitely wanna stay tuned for that. So first, communications enterprise, Side Time Timing Solutions, the heartbeat of 5G. And you're gonna see they're working in a lot of these secular growth trends, a lot of these mega trends we talked about on the channel. The nice thing is they're not really competing against our favorite fabulous semiconductors. So they're not competing against like an NVIDIA or an AMD. They actually help all those components work together the electric components for the timing of those components okay so I wanted to show you the real life applications here so the wireless networks and you can see all the different part numbers and they want to expand even more in these different areas but microwave backhaul a lot of complicated things that maybe we don't deal with every day data centers we know about those right so when you think of data centers ultra low jitter low power small size you saw in those cartoons earlier it's better than quartz for things like jitter the overall performance MEMS is better than the older quartz technology. Industrial, a small part of side time runs a big part of your world. You can see all the different things on here, test and measurement, factory automation, security and surveillance, retail electronics, power and energy, industrial robotics. These guys work with a lot of companies and they're very diverse. And I think this is a very scalable company. I think they're getting a lot of traction. I'll show you some of those numbers later. So mobile and internet of things, huge secular growth, growth trend here, of course, right? A small part of side time runs a big part of your world again. You think of fitness trackers, you think of medical monitoring, like diabetes machines, smart meters. So when you think about in your house, you know, a, a technician doesn't have to actually come read the meter, it can just do it automatically. All this stuff needs timing and needs these MEMS chips. And it's something that really is never talked about. You don't see it, you don't think about it. You know, wireless charging, home automation, smartphones, smart cities, all these secular growth trends and mega trends. This company, you know, has a lot of runway. And like I said in the beginning, this could be the next 10X stock in your portfolio. Also aerospace and defense, so a great way to play that sector as well. Engineered for the world's toughest applications. You think of SATCOM, you think of land and mobile radio, you think of GPS navigation, GNSS, avionics, aerospace, unmanned aerial, aerial vehicles. So you talk about, start talking about drones, field communications. So many different areas you can use these MEMS chips. Now, this is going to be a big one. Automotive, a small part of side time, again, runs a big part of your world. From cameras, you think of all the different sensors. You think of radar and LIDAR. You think of the GNSS again, the infotainment systems and all these new cars, wireless chargers, engine and powertrain lots of different areas. And then the last one here is consumer. And consumer, we've got things like consumer electronics, home entertainment, your TVs, your VR, your AR. Now we're talking about metaverse, personal computing, home automation, audio and video, home appliances. Literally everything runs on semiconductors and everything really needs these, either, either needs quartz or it needs MEMS. And MEMS is slowly starting to replace that old quartz technology. I'm gonna go through this deck quick. There's a lot of great information on here and I like this. The heartbeat of electronics, side time is transforming the world of timing. I think it sums up the business really well. Large market, expanding shares and margins. So $8 billion TAM, and I'll show you what the actual uh, market cap is on the stock. It's a small cap. 88% year over year revenue growth, 65% 2021 non-gap. Uh, we've got broad customer base. So 15,000 customers, 250 applications, 125 products, 2 billion units shipped. That's a lot. Technology leaders. So they invented and they're the leader. They're a fabulous semiconductor business. And it really gets confusing when you talk about that, but when they talk about a fab, so there's fabs and fabless, fabs are using that old quartz technology that we talked about many times in the video earlier. So fabless analog model with operating leverage and strong barriers to entry, experienced management. The management team looks pretty solid. I checked it out last night. Proven management team with track record of growing public companies. You can see they're accelerating the, their momentum here in 2021. I think that'll carry through in 2022, especially with the supply chain constraints and the things, the advantages I mentioned earlier. You can see that they're, they're growing steadily. A lot of these semiconductor companies are seeing a ramp up. I think this one can continue that, that acceleration. So they're the heartbeat in the middle, timing. You know, you got connectivity over here, you got memory, you got the processors, you got the SOC and all the different components. And they're, they're in the middle making all that stuff communicate, the timing of it. Growth and end markets, this is what I like to see. And most of the semiconductor stocks I own, 
They're going to have exposure to data center, internet of things, automotive, 5G, and each one kind of has its own niche play. The nice thing about this company is they really cover all the secular growth trends. So I can argue that so this is one of the better semiconductor plays. It probably could have even made the top 10. The thing about it, it's a little bit expensive. We'll talk about valuation here in a minute. But 125 billion units they're expecting by 2030. So think about that for a second and let that sink in. So 2020, 40 billion units. They want to be 125 billion, and that's what they see in 2030. That's two to three timing chips per device. Right now, there's one to two timing chips per device, and there's going to be higher functionality. I think automotive is a big, big play. We talk about autonomous driving, and I still want to do a top autonomous um, vehicle or autonomous driving stocks video. This would make that video as well as several other names. But let's keep going here. So MEMS is disrupting timing. You think of process, storage, power, timing, go through that one pretty quickly. I want to go through these slides fast and not you know, do a 40-minute video, but lots of great information on the slide deck, and you can go check it out on their website. So here are their customers. They have 700 OEM customers growing and diversified. You can see they do have a little bit of concentration. Apple is one of their largest customers. It doesn't have the customer names, but I would assume one of those big blocks, maybe even the green block, might be Apple. So they do have a little bit of concentration, but it's not that bad compared to some businesses. Sometimes businesses have you know 30% concentration. They've, they've got a pretty balanced portfolio, lots of small customers, mid customers, and large customers, and they're continuing to grow that as well. So we talked a little bit about this earlier, end market one communications enterprise. So why side time MEMS? We, we saw some of those cartoons earlier, precision under changing temperature, they're gonna give an advantage over quartz, Stability under vibration, that could be huge. You think of aerospace and defense when you're launching rockets into space, you're going to want stability under vibration and then higher reliability. Now, if you look at this current and future opportunities in the gray, you can see here that's current and the red is where they see future products. And there's a whole lot more red on your screen than there is gray. And of course, investor presentations are always going to paint the, the best picture they can, but you can see there's a lot of opportunity for growth. You know, data center, that's going to be huge as well, making all this work. End market two, you've got uh, automotive, industrial, and aerospace, same kind of deal, vibration, reliability, etc. You've got automotive, you think of all the different things that go into electronic vehicles, and you think of autonomous driving, all this stuff, and, and even more than that, just the, the key fob to get into the car, you know, the smart mirrors, things you don't even think about require these MEMS chips to operate. You know, cars are going to have, I think, 100 or 200 chips in the future per vehicle, I mean, that's a huge number. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for some of these companies to grow. You know, mobile internet things in consumer we talked about. So they're ultra small size. We talked about how tiny they are. Long battery life, fabulous semi-process supply chain. They can basically get more units produced faster and get them out and don't have as many constraints. Competitive landscape, this is important here. So you think of quartz and then there's analog timing. So there's really three categories. And they, they consider Quartz their main competitor, right? But you do have analog timing as well. So you can see Skyworks is in there in analog timing. You also have um, in the Quartz, you've got Epson. There's a couple names in there. And, and side time really is all three. So it's giving you all three, the oscillator, the resonator, and the clock IC. What it basically means is that they can do all of what the competitors can do and they, they feel they can do it better than their competitors as well. So quick financials, I think this is good to go through. You can see the sales. And you can see if you look at Q1 2021 and you see a, a really nice ramp up and you look at 2021 here, 218.8. So that's 88% year over year growth, solid growth, gross margins, 65%. So they do have, you know, pretty decent margins for a semiconductor company, research and development, 18% operating margin, 30% balance sheet. They've got cash and cash equivalents of about $560 million. This is in millions, total assets, 678 million, total liabilities, 45 Stockholder equity, 632.5 million. And here's some of the additional information. If you want to pause your screen, you can certainly take a look at that. Let's go a little bit deeper into the valuation. I'll give you my opinions on the stock and then we'll wrap it up. Now, earlier on the slides, we saw the different customers and the little cubes, the colored cubes. Now, this is something that I noticed after the fact and I wanted to bring it to your attention. So this is going to be the February 2nd earnings call. So they just had earnings. It's important to kind of mention this. I'll go through a couple of the highlights. So sales to our largest end customer accounted for 18% of sales. So that is a concentration risk to be aware of, which more than 90% was non-phone related. So I wish we knew what customer that was, but it's important at least to note that is a concentration risk. 
It's not necessarily always a bad thing, but it can be a bad thing, of course, if they lose that customer. So gross margins were a little higher, 69.4%. And on the earnings call, if you go through the deck, the CEO says that's the temporary type of a deal. So he expects them to be 60 to 65% margins, which is still really good. So the operating expenses, 23 million. You've got the non-GAAP operating expenses, 39%. So their net income was $29.2 million or $1.32 a share. So it is a profitable company. It is an expensive company. It has a high P ratio. So the earnings here, you can see $1.32. They beat by $0.23 cents on earnings and the revenue of $75.7 million. That was an 87.8% year-over-year increase that beat by $4.7 million. So the ticker on side time is SITM, NASDAQ stock. 187 employees, it's been around since 2004. Like a lot of these semiconductor companies, they've been around for a while. But because of so many secular growth trends, we're really having a technological revolution. And I think you're seeing just more and more of these semiconductor companies being more relevant as these secular growth trends unfold. So the market cap right now, $3.73 billion. PE ratio is 126. So that's where you could say, well, that's a little bit expensive. They've been crushing their numbers. And it looks like the trajectory for this stock and this company is probably upward. So people are paying a premium for this. Now, they, they said a couple of different times, they said their total addressable market currently is about $8 billion. And their market cap is $3.73 billion. So it's, it's interesting sometimes you see some of the SaaS companies and they'll say their total addressable market is $50 billion and their, you know, their market cap is $43 billion. And you're thinking, well, how much room is there really to grow? But considering that they still have market cap in the total addressable market now, the current total addressable market, and you saw on those slides how the total addressable market is growing significantly these guys easily could continue to grow and they could easily be a 10x stock. So you can see that even though the company has been around for a while, they weren't publicly traded until 2019. They came to the market, looks like around $20 a share. And you can see it's kind of ramped up and it's made a little bit of a drop down like most stocks. So if you look at this stock, you can see back in May of 2021, we had about an $80, $85 price target or price range. You had an earnings digested, ramped up a little bit, okay? Kind of leveled up. It slowly just kind of climbed from, I don't know, $77 here to about $138. Then they had their earnings, August 2021. It popped all the way to 208. It kind of traded, you know, up to sideways. A little bit of a pullback, another earnings here, and then it actually dipped. So we had earnings back here, November 20, 2021. Looks like it got ahead of itself. We also had an overall sell-off, so it makes sense. Then it rallied up. All-time high on this stock was $341. And you can see right now it's trading down here about $195. It is back to the 200-day moving average. I'll say that it is a high you know, PE stock, but it might hold up somewhere in this area just because of the, the growth prospects. It's hard to say. I'd love to see this thing come down even lower. I don't own any shares of this stock. I would like to potentially add shares of this stock. It's on my watch list. Definitely check this one out, guys. Do your own homework, make your own decisions. But it, it could be forming a base possibly around this $190 range. And you, you could see it go significantly higher from here. If this video is helpful, please do like, comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you very much. I appreciate all your support. We're continuing to grow at Fired Up Wealth. And I can't thank you enough for all the, the support over the last couple of years, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.